This channel is supported by Truefire. Truefire is an online library of lessons from some of my favorite players. There's thousands of lessons on there. You can use the promo code JNC40 to get 40% off of any of their courses. <laughs> I'm not sure that we get too many kind of experiences that actually produce transformation in our playing. I can think of maybe a handful of things. This is definitely one of them. I think initially it came from a guitarist called Horace Bray, but I wanted to share this idea with you. I did a video about this, one of the very first lessons that I'd actually done on YouTube. I wanted to kind of revisit it. Um, you could think about it as a warm up, but what this really did for me was just change the way that I looked at the fretboard and joined up scales and that sort of thing. I'll jump into it right now. Um, the introduction there was uh, improvised around this idea, the backing track and the tabs for this will go up on Patreon once I get a chance to do them. Talking of transformational stuff, I also want to recommend the Tim Miller Creative Arpeggio Design course on Truefire. Uh, you can use the code JNC40 if you want to get 40% off of that, or you could use the All Access Pass to go through all of the Truefire stuff. They got a bunch of great educators on there that I really like, Andy Wood, Andy Timmons, Alan Hines, Martin Taylor, uh, you know, loads of great stuff on there and all with kind of interactive tabs, backing tracks and all the sort of stuff that you want as a guitarist. But there's a similar sort of approach, the 212 arpeggio design that, that Tim Miller came up with. And I think that's another really kind of key transformational thing that you might want to check out. JNC40 is the code for that. But anyway, on with the lesson. We're going to look at this in the key of A. Now, when I was growing up playing guitar, the sorts of things that I learned were kind of scales. And I'd learn the next scale. And then... be going along and some people might call that kind of the modes they might call that a ionian they might call that b dorian they might call this c sharp phrygian they might call this d lydian but really that's just all a major as well right so i've learned things like that you'd see people talk about practicing scales in this way going from the lowest point to the highest point and missing a note there clearly um, these sorts of things but it was maybe in my mid 20s that or maybe even slightly later 20s that I first saw this kind of concept which was taking things into a whole different kind of intervallic approach and away from the arpeggios that sound like this to arpeggios that sound like this. Which to me had a bit more of a modern sound, a bit more open and a little bit more kind of places where they might sound appropriate. So I think Horace Bray kind of 
doing, I, I think you might have called it the golden warm up, something like that. But the idea here is that we're going to take our A and you think about it in terms of basically we're going to take one initial shape and then move that through the entire scale. Um, so we're going to take this, we get an A on the 5th fret, B on the 7th fret, F sharp on the 4th fret, C sharp on the 6th fret, D on the 3rd fret, and A again on the 5th fret. And what I'm thinking of then is that that becomes my kind of formula. You could think about root, 5th, 6th, 3rd, 4th, root. The really powerful thing is that you can just kind of take the idea and move up one note at a time. So you go, okay, well the A would become a B, the E would become an F sharp, the F sharp would become a G sharp, and then the C sharp would become a D. So you're kind of visualizing And to start off with, this might be very difficult. So take it slowly. Then you visualize one note up for every other note. Becomes B, F sharp, G sharp, D, E, B. And then back down. And then continue up the scale so then you get from here move up one note B to C sharp F sharp to G sharp G sharp to A then you get this so then that is C sharp G sharp A E F sharp C sharp 9 11 seven nine seven nine okay then same idea d so 10 12 9 11 9 10 okay then again e so 12 14 11, 13, 10, 12. Then again, up to F sharp. 14, 16, 12, 14, 12, 14. Then one more. 16, 17, 14, 16, 14, 16. This sort of sounds that I, I can sort of remember hearing people like Pat Metheny play. But never really knowing what was going on. And I think that's kind of the idea. If you could take this like shape, and move it through the scale. You get these whole different kind of new sounds. You can try it in other keys, so maybe if I tried it in D major, If I tried it in F major, okay, and things to try once you've got this under your fingers. So let's just go back to A major, try ascending one and DC. 
send the next. Ascend. Descend. Ascend. Descend. And then maybe try the opposite. So you go, all right, I'm going to descend first. Ascend. Descend. Ascend. Descend. Ascend. And what it does is give you a, a whole different kind of view on the major scale, both kind of vertically and horizontally, that you might not have considered before. I, I know this certainly opened up. kind of different way of looking at things so I wanted to share that with you I hope that's okay and yeah give that a try and maybe just mix things up and explore the sound find the ones that work for you and find the ones that are kind of open sounding Anything with the fourth degree in it, so a D in A, it's going to sound less open. So we could... That A is not necessarily going to sound super open. That one, starting from the C sharp will. Um, start from the E will. So start from the C sharp or the E. The F sharp has got a quite cool Lydian type sound. That's kind of got a sustained sound. So you could play the F sharp one over a D and get quite a cool sound. Or the A one over D and sounds pretty good. one will work over pretty much anything and the C sharp one as well if you're playing diatonically in A major I hope that is as interesting for you as it was for me and um, yeah I hope you get some joy out of that and uh, just one of those things that I thought really did change my playing quite a lot and just gave me a new way of looking at the fretboard and this idea of moving a concept around the fretboard through the scale instead of just up or down scale, just these bigger structures that you can move. I think it's a really, really powerful thing to try doing. And the more you do it, I think the better you get at it. I should do it more, um, but yeah, give this a try. So give yourself like a, a structure, move it up and down the scale and see what sounds come out of it. Just move one note at a time and gradually it becomes a little bit easier to see the, the overall kind of structure probably. I'll catch you in another video soon. Cheers.